in today's video I wanted to take a step back and to talk a little bit about my process of finding good research papers to read and how I actually digest the information and use it. Hopefully this video might be interesting to some of you who are starting out in research or in industry and are looking for ways to optimize their process of keeping up with the literature, finding new papers and using the, the information. It's getting more and more difficult nowadays with so many papers published daily that it's overwhelming. So I have developed a couple of strategies that will save me some time making sure that I'm focusing only always on the content that is most interesting and most useful to me. So how do I do this? So typically when I am looking for a new paper to read, there's two main reasons for this. Either I am generally interested in reading something new, exploring, keeping up to date with literature, staying sharp, so to speak, I want to always be reading a couple of papers per week in order to make sure that I'm always aware of the latest developments in my field, natural language processing. So I'm either generally just looking for cool new areas, cool new papers that came out. That is one reason number one. Or also, or another one is I have a specific problem which could be a research question that I'm thinking about. It could be a technical problem like I need some algorithm to do something for me um, and I'm looking for a specific paper, a specific solution to my problem, not caring about the general, what's going on, but more about the specific use case of a particular paper or work. So for the first one, generally exploring, there's a number of great resources. You could watch my video on YouTube, videos on YouTube to find new papers. You could use Twitter or something like that, or Google Scholar Alerts, or Paper Digest is another cool website that I'm using lately to hear about new papers that are coming out in my field. Um, or yeah, you could just also type in Google Scholar. And for the second scenario where I have a specific problem, I would typically just use Google Scholar. I would come up with a specific query, let's say, I don't know, question answering with transformers or something like this, let's say, if I'm interested in that, I will use the uh, time limits and any search tools to limit my search results to be as specific as possible. Maybe some, I don't know, some specific data set also. Um, and at this point, once you have a list of papers, um, actually it's very important to read the titles of the search results very carefully. This is the main filter that I'm using actually to find my papers. Uh, does the title of the paper sound interesting, sound exciting to my research interests? Does it sound like it could be something that is solving my particular problem that I'm having right now? If yes, great, I'm going to open the paper to take a look at a little bit more. If not, I'm going to skip because I know there's so many papers out there. I'd rather find a very specific paper, especially if I have a specific problem. I want to find a paper that is specifically solving something that I'm a problem that I'm facing rather than spend time on something that is kind of related, but not really maybe. So let's say I find a title that sounds interesting. I'm going to open that up here. I have one that I opened before. And the next step is actually to uh, read the abstract carefully. The abstract is kind of like the selling point of the paper um, containing a lot of keywords, a lot of important takeaways, um, um, results, findings, new methods developed and so on and so forth. It should be mentioned in, in the abstract if it's important. So I'm going to read the abstract. I'm also going to take a look at the authors. I have to say this is not very nice to do obviously because you want to be fair like give everyone. The authors is not the most important to me obviously. Um, so if it's a good sounding title and abstract I'm going to read the paper regardless. But the authors can also be a hint sometimes. Like if you see, okay, it's some, some big shot author. It could be that the paper is super interesting uh, to read. So uh, it might be a hint. But there's also a ton of papers that you might not know who the author is when they're very, very exciting to read. So I'm going to read the abstract. This is the second filter. If it's kind of sounding interesting going in the, in the direction I'm thinking about, the next step will be to skim through the introduction 
and the conclusion of the paper. So I find those also very useful, very, very useful to do because the introduction is a different summary of the paper, focusing more on giving a background of why the paper was written, what is the research area up to before that point a little bit, uh, again, some make contributions. And the conclusion is also a very, very important summary because at that point and the end of the paper, the authors typically are focusing really on the one, two main takeaways that the authors should remember after they have read the paper. So I typically read those two, two before anything else, um, before diving in deeper and investing more time. And at that point, I'm going to have to make a decision. Do I want to invest more time in this paper? And there's typically three outcomes. Number one, no, I don't want to invest more time in this paper. Let's say this was enough. Maybe it's not. Maybe I want to find another paper. Maybe, okay, this is kind of interesting, but there's not really much point to read the whole paper um, in detail. I might take a look at the code at that point to see if the, the, how that, that is looking, if, if a code base is available. I might move on. Outcome two is, this is kind of interesting. I would like, like to find a little bit more, but it's not like, breakthrough findings that I'm expecting for me here. So I'm just going to quickly go through the main points of the paper. For this point, um, I would actually go through the paper, but more skimming maybe. For example, this could be also if it's an area that I'm very familiar with, um, that I have read a lot of papers about, kind of many themes are recurring. So I might it might be sufficient for me to just pick the methods, read that, read the a little bit of the results and then that's enough for me and I kind of know what this is about. It's not like um, not necessary to go deeper than that. And then the third kind of mode of reading that I'm into sometimes is the paper could be super interesting. Maybe it's uh, bringing in a lot of interesting knowledge, interesting information that I would like to really fully immerse myself into. At that point, I'm going to actually download the paper to my tablet where I have a highlighting Two, and I'm going to read the whole paper from scratch. So starting again from the abstract, the introduction and everything. And I'm going to highlight the main takeaways, the main points of the author, key sections, key, um, key uh, elements of the paper that are pivotal for understanding the paper and for putting it into practice for something. So I'm going to spend a lot of time. I might also read the uh, appendix. If I'm really interested in that, look at some examples. I might also, again, take a look at the code, see if I can get that going, run that, if a code is available, if there's a demo available, if it's a demo paper, and just spend a lot more time on the paper. And then for this for this one where I have spent a lot of time, from time to time I also like to do a final step that I find particularly useful. I have this note application and there I will write the title of the paper and I'm going to write three, four bullet points containing the key takeaways of the paper for me personally. So this could be, for example, they introduced a interesting method that I could use in a such and such way. They found some, they have some new conclusion that is really interesting and maybe changes the way things are done in the field, who knows? Or maybe the method is very interesting novel. It's a creating a new potentially relevant research direction. I don't know how to use it right now, but I might be able to use other papers that are going in the same direction that are improving on this paper in the future, something like that. So I'm going to write this down and this is really forcing me to think a little bit more critically about the paper and not just consume the content. Helps me to really yeah, like distinguish, okay, what is it about this paper that I should remember moving forward? Maybe I should refer to this Let's say five months later, I have some new problem and maybe I remember about this paper and then I can go back to my notes or I could remember the paper and then go back to it later on. So I find that this kind of strategy has really helped me to find better papers to read and to really um, speed up my reading process and digestion process. I hope those tips were useful to you. Please like and subscribe for some new upcoming videos in the NLP area and I will talk to you in the next one.